Yo, what's going on, Kicks Army? It's been a minute since I actually talked about what I'm doing in the video, so I'm gonna spend some time kind of going over why this video is different than the others. If you are familiar with the Air Mag, you'll know that the interesting thing about it is that it has certain parts of the shoe that light up. There's the Nike text on the strap, there's that section on the heel, and there's also the section on the outsole as well. Now, if I were to do the process that I normally do and I just create the shapes, it's gonna look just fine. It's gonna have all the detail that I normally would, but I'm gonna do something a little different on those spots that it has the glow effect. What I'll do is I'll take those shapes that are where the spots are going to shine and I'm going to add a blur to them. The particular name for the blur I'm using is a Gaussian blur and basically all it is is that it's blurring the edges of the shape that I made. And just that simple effect is what allows it to look like it's actually glowing. So that section went from being a flat object to a section that now looks like it's glowing. Now the key for this is that I can't just have that section be blurred. What I have to do is I have to have the original section that I was going to create and then I'm going to copy that, put a layer behind it, and then I'm going to blur that layer that's behind it. The reason being is because I still want that area to be defined. I still want that area to be like a lighter blue or whatever, but I want there to be an extra layer of blur that goes around it. If I just blur the layer by itself, that section by itself, it's going to blur it too much to where you can't even tell what that color is. But if we copy that same shape, place it behind the shape, and then we blur it, it's going to give off that glow effect, which is exactly what we want. And again, this shoe would have looked just fine if I didn't have those glow effects, but man, with that blur, it's like that extra little secret sauce that gives it what it needs to look good. Now, for for those of you who don't have Adobe Illustrator, if you're wondering, I believe you can get one piece of Adobe software for $10 a month. If you want to do more than one piece of software, then it goes to like 20. And then if you wanted access to the whole creative suite, it's like $50 a month. And I understand that some of you are young, so money might not be the easiest thing to come by. But one thing that you guys have to understand is that any hobby that you want to do, any hobby whatsoever is going to have some costs associated with it. Like let's just look at basketball. That's a very easy example. You need to purchase a basketball, or at the very least you have to have a basketball in order to play, right? You also need to have a hoop of some sort. You can makeshift one, you can use one at your local park, but you need a hoop. Obviously you need clothes, appropriate clothing for a sport, so you need something that's loose, something that's athletic. And then you also need appropriate shoes. You probably don't want to be playing basketball in like dress shoes or wrestling shoes. So like all those things are cost associated with it. That being said, to do what I'm doing, you don't have to use Illustrator. You can use any software that works with vectors. Now you might be thinking, Kickstart, that sounds awesome, but I don't know what a vector is. Which is a very solid point, so I'm going to try to describe what that is in layman's terms. So in the world of graphic design, Design, there's basically two types of images. There are vector images and then there's raster images. Vector images, like we're working with right now, can be resized at any scale and it will retain the same quality that it had. Whereas raster images are defined by pixels, so if you increase the size of that image, you're going to see the quality start to deteriorate. The pictures that you take on your phone are raster images. The images that you'll see online are raster images. So let's say you go online and you take a picture, you download it, whatever, and you look at it and you zoom in. You're going to notice for the most part when you start to zoom in all the way, the quality of the image starts to deteriorate. That's because raster images are defined by pixels, so you can only make them look as good as they originally are. When you start to zoom in, when you start to increase the size of the image, the pixels are still defined the way they are, so they're not going to get better quality, they're going to start to lose its quality. Whereas vector images or vector objects are objects that were created, and you can zoom in all the way on a vector image and the quality will still be good. And you can zoom all the way out and it will still be good because they don't lose their quality, they're created shapes basically. So like I said, either go on your phone, go online, look at any image and start to zoom in on that image. The quality is going to start to deteriorate, whereas when we're working with vector images, like for example, I'm zooming in and out in the software and illustrator all the time to kind of like see the full out view and to get really deep into it and you're going to notice on the shapes that i create the quality is always good i could take this illustration and put it on a billboard and it's going to look perfect i can also take the same illustration and put it on like a postcard and it's going to look perfect but if you were to take a picture on your phone and you print it out on a regular sheet of paper it might look good if you take that same picture you took on your phone and put it on a billboard right something that's huge something that's like 40 feet by whatever whatever it might not look as good because ultimately the size of the image isn't meant to be that big most of the time people were working on billboards and other advertisements that are huge they need to take good pictures with really good cameras that can retain a lot of quality now with the adobe software products unfortunately you can't outright own them and even if you could back when you could own them they were like really expensive they were like 800, 900 bucks or something like that now there are other pieces of software besides adobe illustrator that uses vectors one of the other ones that i used to use before i started using illustrator was corel draw 
you could look into that and obviously there's different versions of it so you don't have to have the newest version you can find whatever version you'd like now if you're the kind of person that likes to edit photos make realistic images out of multiple images and stuff like that then Photoshop would definitely be the software for you but if you like to do what I like to do and you like to create objects out of shapes maybe if you like to make logos or other stuff like that then Illustrator is definitely the software for you all right guys thank you so much for watching today's video again sorry for any background noise still in Colombia there's a lot of noise going around so hopefully it doesn't bother you guys too much again as soon as I get back from Colombia I do want to go ahead and start pumping out those how to draw videos I know you guys love those as well hopefully before I leave Colombia I can kind of get the site kind of refixed a little bit so that way it's all organized and clean and with anything else coming up in the future I will let you guys know as well with that being said I will see you guys tomorrow peace Thank you.